All right, we are live. We are recorded. I am spotlighted. Guys, drop a seven in the chat if you are excited for Prime Mentality. Normally, this is Mike's talent. Mike is one of the best at painting the vision and really beginning to help people shift their perspectives. But tonight, we launched the Spanish Discord. If you have Spanish speakers in your team, Spanish teams around the world, or you yourself speak Spanish as well, make sure you get plugged into the Spanish Discord. It is the duplication of the one that we have on the English side. We had over 650 people on that call. And so I know a lot of leaders are going crazy right now um, because Prime is primarily, I think 85% in Latin America. So we have such a large expansion um, of this organization. I'm so excited for what we're gonna do for that as, on a system standpoint, on an impact standpoint, on a result standpoint, on a retention standpoint. Um, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing what we've been able to do as we are growing, as we are getting better, um, as we continue to serve, um, and as it's just we continue to learn how to really master these skill sets, how to really learn to master this industry um, and by mastering ourselves, right? And so before we get into that, guys, I want to start with just some gratitude. I was talking to someone earlier and, you know, they asked me a question. They said, how, how do you keep yourself at the frequency that you want to be at? You know, I'm finding myself going through a lot of things in life right now and I'm struggling and, you know, my, you know I'm having my family's in the hospital, you know, I'm at my work. I, I'm not working as many hours. We have a lot of COVID lockdowns and um, and, and things happening, and I'm just I'm struggling. And I said, "Hey, I, I want to let you I want to let you know something right now. I struggle too, right? I'm I don't want to say I'm in a constant state of struggle, but just because you begin to start making more money or start helping more people or you know hit different ranks or, or get fun, it doesn't mean your problems go away, right? There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be things going on in your life. And I said the simple thing that I do that helps me flip a switch." When I'm upset, when I'm frustrated, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling sad, when, when things aren't going my way, is I just become grateful, right? And I'm not just talking about the gratitude in the, in the large scale of things. I, I'm talking about the little things, right? A lot of people, they're, they're grateful for these big things, but we forget that we have eyes to see, ears to, ears to hear, taste buds to taste, food, that, you know, all these different things we can smell, we can walk. We have friends, we have family, we have clothes, we have a roof over our head, we have drinks, we have water. Like, there's so many little things that we forget every single day that we take for granted because they've just become so normal in our life. And when you're living in a state of gratitude, it's hard to be frustrated, right? Even if you get nothing out of this call today, remember that. It's, it's hard to struggle when you're grateful. It's hard to be sad and frustrated when you're grateful. It, it, it's hard to not want to do something when you're grateful. So if you guys have something that you're grateful for today, something that really stands out to you, drop it in the chat, turn your cameras on. We're going to dive right into this. And today's topic is going to be what is really holding you back, right? What is really holding you back from achieving what you want to achieve, from getting to where you want to go, from accomplishing what you want to accomplish? Why are you still in the position that you're in today? Right. And I, I went to church on Sunday and, and the sermon was so good that I actually went twice. <laughs> I went to the 10 a.m. service and I went to the 6 p.m. service and I was just so blown away by the topic. Now, today's not going to be a sermon. Right. We're not at church. I'm going to relate this a lot to business. I'm going to relate this a lot to mindset. I'm going to relate this as much as I can as it was related to me. And so I hope that what I'm talking about today leaves an impression on you like it left an impression on me. And so today I want to talk about something called contentment. Hunter, you, you dropped that to me in private message. I want to talk about something called contentment, right? C-O-N-T-E-N-T-M-E-N-T, -E -E con con contentment, right? And this is something that we're not taught to be, right? This is something that we're ta not taught to have. This is something that we're saying, well, if you're content, you're, you're never going to grow. If you're content with what you have, you're never going to excel. You, you, you got to be hungry, right? You, you got you to want more. You, you got to get this. You got to have that, right? But the greater your contentment, the greater your capacity. The more content you are, the actually more you're able to accomplish. And you're never going to find out what you're able to accomplish if you never learn how to be content. It's crazy to me that we, we, we praise God, right? And I'm gonna use God as, as, as my symbol of the universe for each and every single one of you. You can take God as what you want it to be, is 
we, we praise God when everything's going really, really well, but we forget about communicating with our source when things aren't. When things aren't going your way, it's, all, it's only things are going great when things are going great. But contentment, right, allows us to live in either side of the field, in either side of the spectrum, on either side of the paradigm. My bad, guys. I'm going to enable the, the um, I'm going to have to get used to that. I'm going to need someone to send me, a, I'm going to have to make a note. I'm going to make a little note on my laptop here so I never forget again. Thank you for having that uh, transcribed. Man, just growing. Amazing things, amazing things. Let me pull up my notes here. Perfect. Contentment, right? It, it, it's something that's going to help us grow. And I know this sounds crazy, right? You're like, Tim, like, this is typically not what you teach. I never heard you talk about this. Normally you're talking about manifestation and abundance and all these different things. Why are you talking about this now? And I think it's going to be really, really powerful. I want to give you an example, right? I, I have a pastor. His name's Pastor Madhu. He's out here in Dallas. And he gave this hilarious example about people that talk about Texas, Right. And a lot of people, you know, I, this had this I had this conversation actually having my mom, and my grandma. And I, I remember them saying, like, well, isn't it really hot in Texas? Like, isn't it like 105 degrees every single day? Like, how do you survive when it's so hot? And he was making a joke and I was laughing at it so hard, even when I heard it the second time is because he says people think it's so hot in Texas. But I live inside a house and I have air conditioning. I get inside my car and I have air conditioning. I go to the gym and there's air conditioning. I go to church and there's air conditioning. I'm not living outside, thank God, right? But what he was trying to say was, I don't live in outside conditions. He lives inside. And that's how he's been able to keep his peace of mind, right? So I have a, the question for you is, when everything on the outside is hot or when everything on the outside isn't going your way or everything on the outside doesn't seem to be working in your favor, do you have an AC inside of you? When someone says no, do you have a piece of outcome? When you lose a trade, do you have a piece of outcome? When we don't hit the rank in your goal, do you have a piece of outcome? So we're searching for AC inside our home to stay comfortable, but we're not searching to have an AC inside of our own life. And this example hit so hard home because I was like, wow, like that makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. And I had to start questioning myself. And this, this is why this is such a powerful trend. You guys know I don't take notes, but I have literally pages of notes. I'm going through this and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm saying it out loud to myself now. And I hope it's hitting you like it hit me. Look over, some, look over a situation that's happened in the past week. Something that didn't go to your way. How, how did you react? Was it a reaction that you would teach someone in your organization how to react? Was it a reaction that you would teach a friend how to react? But guys, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Catherine, I'm recording, so I'll make sure you get this recorded. You're not going to know what you're capable of, right? What your capacity is. You're not going to know how far you can go until you go through some negative things, right? You're not going to know how good it feels to get to a certain level if you've never gone through the mud if you've never gone through some things, right? So guys, you have to build this inner AC because in order for you to grow, you have to go through things that you are not going to enjoy, right? Like the, the idea of iron sharpening iron, the idea of diamonds being created, the idea of buildings being built, metal being, uh, I'm frozen, let's see this really quick. Let's get it. <laughs> Drop a seven in the chat if you guys can hear me now. I hope so. Need some participation from y'all. I'm just going to be talking to myself. All right, cool. We got some seven. Perfect. Thank you. I know the Wi-Fi has been a little spotty today. I'm currently not home. I'm about to have dinner. And so um, I'm, I'm in a different location. So <laughs> I'll make sure on my next training, I get like a hotspot hot spot set up and or I'm in a different spot in the uh, apartment building. But beyond the point, right? You have to go through things because you're not going to understand truly what you have if you don't. An arrow can't go forward if it's not pulled back. Right. So really, I, I want you to highlight the word AC, right? Highlight the word air conditioning and then highlight the word you, because what's really holding you back is you. It's not your mentors. It's not the system. It's not the market. 
It's not your external factors. It's nothing more than you. We could end the call right there with that statement. What's holding you back is you. And until we really have spiritual and inner success, the physical is never going to happen, right? So I want to talk about three things with you guys. I want to talk about three things that I think personally, and we're going to keep this call short, hopefully only 10 to 12 more minutes. Um, I just want to really give you this and, and let you really soak this information in from 8.30 to 9 before we have Cash Cartier at 9 p.m. Central Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So I think there's three things that you can learn from the lessons that I learned this past weekend to help you learn contentment. Number one, right? You have to learn it while you're living. You have to learn it while you're living. How can you trust God when you're at the bottom of your, when you're at the bottom of the, the, the pole, right? If you've never been through it. How can you trust God if you've never been to the top? You, you can't have trust. You can't build contentment. You can't build experience. You can't build learning lessons if you don't go through it, if you don't experience it. It's like trying to tell someone, you know, it's like you not having the result that one person wants and you're telling them how to get it. Like I've always, this has always been really confusing me. Like I go to the gym and I see trainers and they're, they're not fit. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Or it's like people who are gurus, right? Or people that want to teach trading or people that want to do X, Y, Z because they have an ego or they have something else and, but they don't have the results, right? You can't learn to trust God if you're not living through the experiences that he's putting in your life. Some of you right now, are, go, are in class. Some of you right now are experiencing something and you're failing because you're complaining and not realizing that this is experience that you need to get exactly what you want. You ask God to make more money so he gave you more problems. How do you make more money? You solve more problems. You, you ask God to become a better trader, a better entrepreneur, so he put obstacles in your way so that you can learn the lessons that get you to the next level. You ask God to shoot up multiple ranks, but you have to remember you got to be pulled back in order to be shot forward. Some of you right now are failing because you're complaining more than realizing the experience that you're going through is the experience that you need. And the question I ask people all the time is, why would God give you something more if you're not grateful for what you have now? I had someone complain to me that, you know, they were just complaining. I'm not going to get into the specifics. And I was like, bro, like, listen to you. Like, listen to you. I remember, like, I, I catch myself doing this. I'll be transparent. I, I, compl I don't really complain, but I find myself struggling being content with being Chairman 10. Not that I'm not grateful. Not that I don't love everyone in my organization. But I have this massive focus that, and we're going to get into this lesson too. Maybe I should have shared this in lesson two. But, I mean, in part two, but... I have this focus on going somewhere else so often that I'm not grateful for what I have right now. When I was a P150, I couldn't even imagine being Chairman 10. When I was a P2, I prayed for Chairman 10. And now that I have it, I'm not grateful for it. Right? So why would God or your universe or whatever you believe in give you anything more if you're not using what you have right now? It's like when people say, well, when I have the office, I'll start doing presentations. When I have the team, I'll start traveling. When I have the six-figure account, I'll start using residual. I mean, I'll start uh, using proper risk management. You know, when, when, I, when I have six figures, I'll start giving more money to the church or when, to your mother, to whomever, right? So you're never going to receive more if you're not accepting what you have now. I've learned that I've had the most growth when I live in a constant state of gratitude, when I live in a constant state of appreciation, when I live in a constant state of love, I seem to attract more. Because God is beginning to say, cool, he's learned his lesson and he's ready for the next door to open. Some of us can't get to the next door because we're knocking and not realizing the handles right there for us to turn it. You're going to piss the door won't open. I'm outside. We're live. We're lit. Can you guys hear me? Let's see if this works a little bit better. Oh, this is working a little bit better. We're lit. Okay. I should have no more issues. I guess the best spot for Wi-Fi is not inside the house. <laughs> it's outside the house, but it is what it is. 
All right, cool. We're back. We're live. Let me get back to my notes here. What I was saying was, if I can remember, right, some of us, right, we're knocking at this door. We're bitching and, oh, I forgot I wasn't going to swear anymore. We're complaining, <laughs> right? I, I made another commitment to myself. No more swearing on webinars. Unless I'm really feeling it, no more swearing, right? And so we're knocking on this door. We're complaining, but we're not realizing that the handle's right there and all we got to do is turn it. You haven't learned your lesson yet. And it's okay because the moment that you do, you're going to get to that next level, right? The moment that you do, you're going to get to that next level. So number one, you have to learn it while you're living it. You have to have that experience. Number two, don't compare yourself. Don't compare yourself. Just write that. I will not compare myself, right? You want to kill your contentment? Compare yourself to someone else. Right, you, you wanna downplay your success? Compare yourself to someone else. You wanna downplay your worth? You wanna downplay anything that you have? Compare yourself to someone else. Guys, Pastor Madhu, he, he did this amazing example on stage. He brought three people up on stage. He had a 15 year old to hit the right of him and he had a mother and her baby to the left of him. The 15 year old was obviously 15 years old and the baby was five months old. And he said, guys, I, I want to give you an example of comparison, right? And he said, I'm going to ask these people three questions. And he asked the 15-year-old, can, can you dance, right? And she danced. Of course she could dance. Then he looked to the baby, five months old, and said, can you dance? He started doing the little sound. He was beatboxing. And the baby just looked at him confused. Then he said, okay, cool, you can't dance. Then he looked back at the 15-year-old and said, well, can, can you say your ABCs? Of course. She said her ABCs. He looked at the five-year-old and he said, ask the same exact question. Can you say your ABCs? And the baby just wanted to chew on, on the microphone. Okay, cool. You can't do that. Right. He said, okay, one more thing. So can you walk? The 15-year-old walked and obviously the baby could. And, and this is what he said. He said, I find myself comparing myself to people who are 15 years old. He said, I created this church five months ago. And it was perfect because the baby was actually five months old. He said, I created this church five months ago, but I find myself scrolling through Instagram, throwing, scrolling through social media, scrolling through, you know, different articles online and asking myself, why don't I have what they have? Why can't I do what they do? But he forgets that he's only five months old and not 15. It doesn't mean he doesn't have the capacity. It doesn't mean he doesn't have the ability. It doesn't mean that he's not going to be able to do that, but he hasn't had the experience. He hasn't had the time to do what someone who's had 15 years to learn to do. And the craziest part is you're taking away from your special experience, your special moment, your special time by comparing yourself who's in a completely different chapter than life of you are. You're looking at the educators and saying, I want that, but you've been trading for two months. You're looking at the chairman, you're saying, I want that, but you don't see them put in four years worth of work. You're looking at the nicer cars, the nicer homes, the nicer clothes, the nicer portfolios, but you're taking away from your special time, your special moment, right? Guys, there's the quote, we've all heard it. Sometimes the grass is greener on the other side. And sometimes they're right, but here's the thing. Sometimes we don't realize that the grass is actually artificial turf. It was made to look like that. It was made to be that green. It was made to stay that height. Sometimes the grass is better, but listen, are you willing to put in the sacrifice that that grass had to go through? You, you look at Mike, you, you, you look at me, you look at the travel, you look at whomever. You don't, I don't want to be the example. Whoever you keep comparing yourself to, and you're saying, oh, well, they have this, they have that. But have you actually seen what they had to do to get that? Did you see the sleepless nights? Did you see the nose? I mean, if you go look at the grass, you see a really nice house, like go ask them what their taxes are. Like, shit, how much, how much property tax do you pay for this place? Some of you are comparing yourself to the mansion and you can't even afford the property tax. You can't even afford the electricity in the room. You can't even afford the, you can't even pay the real estate agent to close the deal. But you're comparing yourself to a completely different moment. 
Guys, this is one of the craziest things that he said about comparison. He says it's crazy that content, right? Content and contentment is spelled the same way. And the reason why you can't be content in where you're at is because the content that you continue to consume. You're scrolling through social media and looking at edited photos. You're scrolling through social media and, and looking through things that really aren't the truth. And you're missing out on your blessing because you're robbing yourself of your joy. You're, you're missing out on everything that's happening around you because you're looking at everything that's happening around other people. Because you can't put the AC inside of you, you're worried about what other people are doing. So you, you, you're holding yourself back because you can't even hold yourself up. Oh, well, she, she's got you know, a nicer body than me, or he's got more money than me, or this, this person, yeah, you're comparing yourself that to someone that isn't you. God did not make Mike to be Tim, nor did he make me to be Mike. So if I try to be Mike and do what Mike does all the time, did I serve my greatest purpose? No. I became nothing than a copy. I, I can't pursue my full capacity. I can't pursue the full greatness and rewards and prosperity that was granted to me, that was given to me, that is my birthright, because I wasn't focusing on me and I was comparing myself to other people. All right, so number one, you have to learn it while you're living it. Number two, don't compare yourself. Don't you dare compare. Highlight that. Don't you dare compare. And then number three, probably the most important one, the most important one, know what you need, right? Know what you need. Some of you don't even know what you want. Let's forget the wants, actually. Screw the wants, right? Because everyone wants something. But do you know what you actually need on a spiritual level, on a physical level? It, it's crazy that I, I always say, man, you know what? My happiest moments was when I was serving people, when, when I was doing mission work, when I was traveling around the world and, and, and just helping people. My happiest moment is when I do something and I know that that person can't pay me back. When I do something without expectation. You can't go to the next level because you don't know what you need. See, here's something. This is how you can know that you're becoming, you, can, you become spiritually mature. Go to bed tonight and before you go to bed, say, God, I don't know what I need. But I'm going to trust you in my highs and I'm going to trust you in my lows. And I'm going to trust that the plan and the path that you have given me is, leaving, or is leading me to exactly where I need to be. Guys, you're never going to receive what isn't going to serve you. You're trying to get things in life that aren't going to serve you. You're pursuing that girl that isn't going to serve you. You're pursuing that business or that job or that fill in the blank that isn't going to serve you. It's not a need. So if you believe, okay, the, the universe is working in my favor. God is good all the time. But then you're complaining that you're not getting what you want. You're not realizing that God isn't putting it in your life because you don't need it. That's what's really holding you back. I want the Bentley, but guys, you need the money first. I want the Roly, but what? You need something first. I want the team, but here's the thing. You probably need the emotional intelligence first. You have to know what you need first, guys. Those three things right there is going to help you from holding yourself back. It's going to help you getting to the next level. Be okay living in those moments. Be okay being who you are. Be okay searching for what you need and not searching for what you want. The wants are great. The wants are going to come. I'm not telling you don't go out there and go work for the nice car, the nice home, the nice things. But is that really what makes you happy? Or is it because you compared yourself to someone else, that's what you think you need? Eric Thomas said it best. I came on stage. He came on stage with $200 shoes, a pair of shorts, and a, a Walmart that he probably got off canvas or whatever, whatever, printful, a $20 shirt. He says, I don't need the flash. I don't need the nice things. I have what I need. I have a relationship with my family. I'm impacting hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis. 
I'm taking care of my wife who has cancer. He found out what he needed and was blessed by abundance because of it. Guys, you are the only person holding you back. And that to me is one of the biggest, I think, blessings that we can have is because who, who's going to help better? How, who's going to help you better than you? Ain't going to be me. I'm not with you 24 hours a day. It ain't going to be your best friends. They're already worrying about their own stuff. It ain't going to be your coworkers. They don't care, <laughs> right? It's you. And when you take responsibility for that, you take extreme ownership over that, you're going to see yourself get to the next level. So guys, I apologize for the, the crazy Wi-Fi situation. I'll make sure we're handled and, and taking good on that. Um, but I, I love you guys. I'm grateful for each and every single one of you. I hope that this training, this webinar was a breakthrough, a paradigm shift for you as big as it was for me. It, it gave me a lot of clarity in my life. It gave me a lot of desires that, you know, it shifted a lot of things the way I was looking at them. So um, I just wanted to share with you because it was shared with me. And remember, that is the blessing of being in the industry that we're in is the things that we learn we're able to share, the things that we learn we're able to impact with, the things that we learn that we're able to help other people do the same thing. Don't take what you guys have in front of you for granted. You're going to miss it. <laughs> You're going to miss the bigger picture if you take what you have for you for granted. So guys, I love you. I appreciate you. If you need me on calls this week, whether they're closing calls or team trainings or opportunity calls or whatever it may be, let me know. I got you guys and we'll get this to work soon.